All right, we're continuing on in section 9.7. This is a long section. So now we're just going to talk about the zero product property before we continue with quadratic functions and equations. So basically, let's just think about multiplying to zero. Four times what would give me to zero? Well, it has to be zero. Zero times three gives me zero. It's got to be zero. So if I have two numbers that multiply to zero, either this is zero or this number is zero, right? One of these numbers is zero every time. And so we use that when we look at the structure of quadratic equations. So basically when we look at this here is, um, and we're gonna do an example, but a t-shirt company determines if they sell t-shirts for X dollars each, then the company's profits, Y will be given by this equation here. What we can determine by examining the structure, the expression is the difference of two terms, so it's 1,000 minus this here. And when you subtract an amount from 1,000, the result will be less than 1,000. Well, that makes sense if we're subtracting, unless the amount is negative or zero. But can the number be negative or zero? Because we're looking at a squared value, it's gonna be positive or zero. So no matter what happens, the 1,000 is always going to be subtracting 0 or a positive number. So what that means is that 1,000 minus that number must always be less than or equal to 1,000 no matter what. So that means that this is the maximum. And how can this be achieved? Well, how can we get a maximum? It can be achieved only when this subtracted term is 0 because then we can keep it a, a thousand. We want that to be zero. So when does this term equal to zero? Well, we know that two things, when we multiply two things by zero, one of them has to be zero. Well, we know 10's not going to be zero, so this term needs to be zero. And we could square root both sides. We would end up seeing that it's just x minus 15 equals zero. So then if we add 15 to both sides, we can see that when x is 15, this term is going to be 0, 15 minus 15, and then we'll get to keep our maximum. So the maximum profit is set when the price x is 15. And we're going to do a few of examples here. So an object is thrown down from the top of a building. A height function for the object is given by this equation, where t is the number of seconds elapsed since the object was thrown, and h is the height of the object. Explain how to reason about the structure of the equation to determine when, okay, so that's a t time question, the object will hit the ground. Okay, what does it mean if something hits the ground? What would the height be? Well, the height would be zero if it's at the ground. So what this is asking is when will this be zero? Well, we've got three things that we're multiplying here. Well, when will this be zero when one of these is zero? Either that's zero, that's zero, or that's zero. Well, we know 16 can't be zero. So it's gonna hit the ground when either that's zero or when that's zero. Well, let's solve this equation, or both of these, really. So it would hit the ground when t is negative eight seconds. Can time be negative? No, so not that. Let's solve this one. Minus five, we get negative t. You might be thinking, uh-oh, it's happening again, but we could divide or multiply by negative one, and we get five. So it will hit the ground. Remember, that's what that zero means at five seconds. We can reason about that equation. And here it is um, explaining it in words. Let's do another example. An oil company has determined that its profit is given by this equation where X is the number of dollars to sell each gallon of gas, I'm sorry, gallon of oil, and Y is the annual profit in millions. Explain how to reason about the structure of the equation to determine how the company can maximize its profit. All right maximize its profit. Profit is y. We want the most we can get here. Well, we know that it's 4,800 minus something. If we minus something, this is, this is taking away money, right? Our profit is y. So we know that the most it could be is 4,800. That's the most. But at what price should they set it? Well, I'm going to want to take away nothing, right? <laughs> Ideally, I want nothing so that this is the maximum and then I'm happy. But how do I make this term nothing? So we have this term. How do I make it nothing? Well, I set it equal to zero. Now this or this has to be zero. But I know 300 isn't going to be zero. So this 
let's try this, x minus 450 squared is zero. And 450 squared is just 450 times 450. Oops, x times 4, x minus 450. And these are the same, so we don't need to solve it twice. Just one of these we'll solve. So when x is $4.50, when x is $4.50, this term becomes nothing. And then we subtract nothing, and so we get our maximum of 400, 4,800. And here it is written out. So you go ahead and give these two problems a try. Press play when you're ready to see the solution. There's one, and there's the other. So let's um, continue learning about other types of relationships, and we'll learn about exponential functions, where a and b are numbers, not and b is not one. And these are geometric sequences. So linear functions are arithmetic, and um, exponentials are geometric. And they can grow or decay. So when we look at an exponential graph, um, it can either grow or it can decay. And um, there, um, there's another pattern, and let's just kind of take a look at that. But where will we see these in real life? We'll see these in um, money with interest, credit, populations of people or animals, or carbon decay. So that's where we see exponential functions in real life. So what happens here is when we look at the first differences, nothing happens. But when we look at the differences, it's going to be multiplied by a constant. So the second differences excuse me, the first differences, the first differences are going to have a constant multiplier. And that's how we'll know that they're exponential. So again, let's just recap determining the type of function here. And this can be actually a little bit tricky. So we've just been looking at the y values, but we can't just ignore the x coordinates because then we might miss another pattern here. So um, we might think that this table exhibits a linear function, but because the x-coordinates do not have a constant increase, this is going 3 and then 2, this plus 30 is meaningless because this is not constantly increasing. These differences are not constantly increasing. And so we would be incorrect in thinking it was linear. So let's do an, um, an example, and then you'll do a U-try. All right, so for each of the following tables, determine what kind of relationship exists, how you can tell, and we do not need to find equations, so that's good. So for table A, first I'm just going to look here, and I'm going to see, okay, these are constantly increasing by 1. Okay, and then what's happening here? These are increasing by 0, but it is a constant value of 0, right? So that's a constant change of 0. So that's linear, constant change. All right, here we've got, okay, this is a constant increase. And then here, okay, this is not the same. Plus 5, plus 7, plus 9. Okay, if I were to multiply these, 3 times nothing gives me 5, 5. No, okay, so what about the difference between those two? And in fact, that is a constant second difference, so that is quadratic. And finally, when we look here, now we're increasing by 3, and then we're increasing by 5, so and then we're increasing by 7. So there is a constant increase here. It's not by 1, but it's a constant increase. And then what's happening over here? This is plus 6. This is plus 10. This is plus 14. This is plus 18. So um, we do not have um, 6 times something to get me to 10, so it's not exponential. But when we add these, we get plus 4. So again, we are seeing another quadratic. And if you want to read that a little bit more, here you go. And then you give this a try on your own. Press play when you're ready to see the solution. And finally, we have concluded section 9.7.